最低だよあの人ああ鈴本さんや篠原さん森重君結衣先生みんなのことが終わったらこの石はすぐに壊すからおうその意見には俺も同感だ両方ともぶっ壊す案だな As if he'd been waiting for this cue, Kishinuma pulled the other stone from his pocket. Kishinuma? <laughs> 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 いき返らせるとかその鈴本たちのことはもう考えない方がいいんじゃないか無茶ばっかしてお前がまた死ぬ思いするとかよ鈴本も結衣先生も篠原も森重もみんなよそんなことは望んでねえと思うんだ そうじゃないかもしれないいい加減にしろ篠崎佐藤氏や中島がどんだけお前のこと心配してると思ってんだごめんなさいでもお願い岸の間もう少しだけもう少しだけでいいから私の気の済むまでやらせてお願い I turned my gaze up to meet Kishinuma's. My eyes must have looked like saucers, windows into a mind full of worries, fe ideas, and fears spurred by this unexpected turn of events. Kishinuma patted me on the head reassuringly as he said this, and I had no idea how to react. I felt warm and safe, but also a little annoyed, much like a younger sister being simultaneously comforted and scolded by her big brother. All I could say in response was, I could feel my eyes still bulging from my head, opened as far as my eyelids would allow. I imagined how I must have appeared to Kishinuma, and was momentarily embarrassed. Okay, we can explore a bit. He's late. Seriously, what is he thinking? That boy needs a boot to the head, I swear. I don't need anything right now. Could have sworn I just saw something moving under the trash can. It's possible. There's a human arm poking out through a hole in one of the garbage bags. Though on closer inspection, it's from a mannequin. Yeah, that's what they look like when they get tired. Where are all the people? The streets seem unusually quiet. Is it just because of the late hour? I remember running up these stairs with Mayu Suzumoto. At the time, it never dawned on me that the legitimacy of those memories could ever be called into question. Why would it? 
when you graduate, transfer, or get married, you're always still able to see one another as long as you're both alive. But in this reality, it's as if Suzumoto never even existed. Ready to head home? Come on then, let's go. A Tokyo map was displayed on the television screen, marked with two red dots. The marquee at the bottom provided the headline, Sudden Violent Deaths Remain Unexplained. Without thinking, I'd left the socks I just removed from my feet on the living room floor and began walking toward the bathroom. This was a bad habit of mine, so ingrained within me that it had almost become ritual. Mom did well to have caught it so quickly. I grabbed my socks and left the room. I set my bag down in my room, quickly and automatically grabbed my sweatpants and spats, and made a beeline for the bathroom. When I got there, I threw my socks into the hamper with purpose, then began peeling off my school uniform. As I observed myself in the mirror, I began to murmur. Those burn marks on my neck and arms were eternal reminders of what I'd been through at the Shinozaki estate. I could clearly remember the agony I went through as they'd formed. I remember watching them sear into my flesh out of thin air, blood spurting from them as if I'd been knifed. I only survived because Hinoa sacrificed herself in my place. I tried to force self-confidence into my expression. When it wouldn't come, I slapped my cheeks hard. It was in me somewhere. It just needed to be yanked out into the open. I lowered my head into the water ever so slightly, blowing bubbles in the water with my mouth. The pros and cons of returning to Heavenly Host were racing through my head. This was just about the last thing I expected. I couldn't help but scream. It was that same boy who'd found his way into my room last time, wearing the exact same clothes. He spoke to me without once turning his head to look in my direction. He smiled, still facing away from me. It was a confident yet sinister grin.
My face had to have been as red as fire by this point. My head felt like it now housed all the blood from my entire body. I imagined myself white as a sheet below the neck and flashing red above it, on the verge of a megaton expression. Or explosion. <laughs> he handed me the photograph from Aiko. I grabbed the photograph from his hands as aggressively as I could muster, then backed away slightly, putting as much distance between me and him as humanly possible. It was definitely the same picture of the little girl holding the hatchet that Aiko had shown us earlier, but I now noticed that she was holding something in her other hand too. It was a hard-bound book, around the size of a typical desk dictionary, and though I could barely make it out, there was a certain aura to it that looked an awful lot like a face. He stuck out his hand and pointed directly at my face, then slowly lowered it down toward my abdomen. He was now inexplicably pointing at my lower body, but as soon as I started to get self-conscious, he flipped his hand over and opened it, exposing his palm. There was another piece of ten yen gum cupped there, the same kind as before. I'm not sure why I took it, but I did, without even thinking. As soon as the exchange was made, he immediately turned toward the bathroom window, apparently preparing to make his escape. My questions seemed to stop him in his tracks. I wasn't about to drop my guard, especially given the obvious advantage this boy had over me. But he didn't seem like he'd come to attack me or anything. Rather, it was almost like he was trying to lead me somewhere, to show me the way. He turned his head toward me just enough that I could catch a brief glimpse of the eyes beyond, behind, beyond his hood. They were ice blue in color, but gentle and sincere. He smiled once more as he leaped out the bathroom window. I was kind of dumbfounded. I had no idea how to process what had just happened. Mom barged into the bath, brandishing a broom. It was probably the first thing she could find with which to fend off potential intruders. Too bad she hadn't been just a moment quicker. All I could do was squat on the cold bathroom floor and stare at her with hollow eyes. There is no way to adequately explain any of this to her. It was late at night, and I still hadn't bothered changing out of my school uniform. I needed food, though, so I decided to hit up the convenience store on my way back home. I'd picked up a bottle of olives, a pack of tofu, some mineral water, and other various things to keep me going for a while. I could hardly believe it. There was actually an occult section at the damned mini-mart, with all kinds of stupid stuff like spirit talisman magnets and anti-demon wards. I grabbed one off the shelf at random and looked at the company logo on the back side. PL Promotions Co. Inc. For these last two months since we'd gotten back from Heavenly Host, it seemed like there was a real spiritual boom going on all over the world. Whenever there'd be a strange death or something, the public would be all over it, downright excited about the possibility that it might be supernatural in nature. It was all over TV shows and magazines, too, with independent researchers checking out spiritual hotspots and giving fancy New Age advice to people just to boost ratings or sales. And now this. Exorcism merchandise next to prepackaged cupcakes and ready-made dinners. 
ちょっと前までならこんなもの見ても気持ち悪いって笑えたんだろうけど今じゃそんな風に笑えなくなっちまったなこんなの本物を相手に聞くのかよなんて思うようになると The item I was examining happened to be one of the spirit talisman magnets, seemingly the last one in stock. An old lady suddenly reached around me from behind and yanked it right out of my hands. She glowered at me for a moment before taking her prize over to the register. And I just stood there, staring blankly at her as she walked away. Rude. Okay, so I'm. Oh, what are these flowers for? It's a withered bouquet of flowers. Oh, yeah, I heard there was a serial killer who'd recently done in a middle school girl around here. These were probably left in memory of her or something. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. Oh, it's just a cat. Don't I feel like an idiot now? It's late. I just want to go home, I think. Okay, your home's not that way. してんだこんな時間に家に帰ったんじゃねえのかよ。うん。ごめんね。こんな遅くに。アルバイト。ああ。今日は遅番だったからな。待て。まさかずっと待ってたのか。こんなんか終わるかったな。うん。平気。It was actually really chilly night. I could see Shinozaki's breath dissipating around her chin in so short, frequent bursts. My room was on the second floor of the apartment building. I hadn't been expecting guests, but I had just tidied up for my own sake a little while back, so it was fairly presentable. It's really nice, too. Shinozaki immediately sat down on my bed and began sipping the tea I'd made for her. She was holding it in both hands, probably less for politeness and more just to warm them up. <laughs> the sound of a large truck driving by seemed to catch her off guard. She's clearly a bit jittery, unsurprising, all things considered. Time passed us by at a snail's pace. Shinozaki continued to sip her tea, never once removing either hand from the warm cup. She definitely had something on her mind. Something had happened. It was written all over her face. No, they don't, you liar. Shinozaki was in my room. I dreamed about this before, but never thought it would actually happen. I was half acting as admittedly, this wasn't entirely unexpected. Shinozaki may be a lot of things, but unpredictable is not among them. 
I took out the Ever After Stone I'd stolen from Aiko. I tried to be as strong and commanding as I could possibly muster. I needed her to realize what a bad idea this was. She had that photograph thing from Aiko with her and was pointing to the little girl's left arm. I didn't have to look very hard to see it, but... それでこれが武功部シャドウズだっていう確証はあんのかよ。ないけど。でも多分間違いないと思う。多分ってお前。天神賞へはね、この本を取り戻しに行くの。そしたらみんなの魂を涅槃から解き放てる。鈴本さん
I couldn't tell if she was mad or happy or what. Her eyes were either like daggers or saucers. I couldn't really make out which. Maybe she'd come here expecting me to actively shoot her idea down her ideas or something. Maybe she thought she'd be alone in this. Maybe she figured out what I was up to. Or maybe she'd been expecting me to say exactly what I'd said to her. And maybe it annoyed her? Either way, tears began to explode from her eyes so quickly that red bags were forming under them almost instantly. She then turned her back to me, all with one seemingly unconscious spin of her body. She seemed like she was trying her hardest not to let herself cry, though it wasn't exactly working. She paused, seemingly waiting for me to answer, but I had no idea what to say and absolutely didn't want to say the wrong thing, so I just stood there like a dolt. Finally, she turned back to face me, her tears mostly dry. Still a little self-conscious about crying, though, she kept her eyes closed, a telltale frown belying her confidence. There is obviously something between the lines for me to read here, but hell if I knew what it was. Shinozaki removed the Ever After Stone from her pocket and placed it squarely in my hand. I positioned it next to my stone and stared intently at the two. This was the turning point. What I did next would decide our fates. Could decide our fates. I couldn't mess this up. Outside my window, I could still hear the sound of construction vehicles driving by. It was now or never. In as close to one solid motion as I could manage, I opened my window and chucked the two stones out into the road. <laughs> I timed it perfectly, and my aim couldn't have been better. Another truck was just about to pass by, and the stones were immediately in its path. The sound I heard next was a satisfying crunch. It was the sound of delicate, glass-like rocks breaking into tiny pieces. Shinozaki had rushed over to the window, and directly witnessed the fate of the Ever After Stones. As soon as the truck drove over them, she collapsed to her knees. I couldn't even finish my sentence before Shinozaki's palm slammed my face with an incredible force. The loud smack of flesh on flesh echoed throughout the room. The side of my face was immediately in pain. I began rubbing it with my hand as I looked into Shinozaki's eyes. Her face was filled with tears and her nose was running. She was breathing so heavily, her shoulders were bobbing up and down. She was absolutely hysterical with rage. It was my turn to fire back now. I was certain I'd done the right thing. Leaving me with those hurtful words, Shinozaki then pushed past me and ran out of my room, crying like a child the whole way. I stood back up again, rubbing my cheek where I'd been slapped.
だドラッグに踏まれたのに当然だろうただの石じゃねえんだあ,あなたは翌手段を手に入れたか論から手段次に実践だ進め貪欲にむさぼるように邁進しろお前はもう飛べるパンピードも超越する世の断りに手を突っ込むことのできる人間だ教えてよ味方なの<笑>白だけ忍ばくん比べてこいつはクズだなんだよお前That guy passed in front of Shinozaki's place. あゆみ味方かと聞いたねその通り守るもの俺はお前の姉日の江の世話になった一番でしょ矢後裏教会のキリアミストだ会場のワードは覚えているさてとそれじゃあ実践と行こうかその石貸してみな俺にしっかり捕まってろよあとほらお守りだ Obtained Misto's Charm, the Argus Cube. パンピーの道を生きてろやめてねはんよしびとむかえよしろだけ<笑> 